Hi everybody, thank you guys so much for joining me for another My Expert Live Training Webinar. My name is Jared, I'll be your trainer for today. It sounds kind of funny to say trainer. You guys aren't dolphins, you're awesome humans. <laughs> so today's uh, webinar training is for anyone, you, or I should say it's for everybody, but it's specifically for folks who might be new to heat pressing. Maybe you haven't had a chance to press some cool stuff today. And I know it's, it's not like the prettiest setup, but today we're doing sweaters beanies and jackets my heat press is already ready and we're we're actually right about to get started the first thing we're going to start off with is this sweater so this and everything i'm making it for me today usually i make things in sample size which is a medium but nobody ever wears it i'm doing this for me so you see my sweater it fits just like perfectly right here here's something this is a double extra large so here's something you're going to want to keep an eye on all right the little kangaroo pouch right here. That, like I have a perfect area. This is a 15 by 15 inch heat press. So this little kangaroo pouch, like it hangs off the edge perfectly. What you don't want to do is on smaller uh, hoodies, this little pouch is going to land right here. And then the neck is going to land like right here on smaller sweaters. So just be careful for that. When that happens, I love using either a tea padded or this has a little polyester in the material. So I would probably actually use a pressing pillow uh, to get this one just right. And in fact, I do have my trusty pressing pillow. You might ask, why are we using a pressing pillow? The cool thing about pressing pillows is that they like, it tapers off the edge. So if you've had any issues with getting press marks and a press mark is like, if I were to heat press this right here, uh, it's very likely gonna leave an imprint of the edge of the heat press right on here. Now what a pressing pillow does, and I might not use this because I don't think it's big enough for my print. You gotta, you gotta make sure you measure these things, kids. Um, I can just get a custom piece of foam if I have to. But anyways, the reason why I, I like this is because the edge is like, it tapers off. So instead of getting, catching the hard edge of the heat press, the heating element is just gonna kind of taper off. Now, if you have a really sensitive piece of fabric, it might still scorch here, but instead of catching a hard, very hard line, and I'm probably gonna press this just so you can see exactly what I mean. Uh, but instead of getting a hard line on the edges, uh, it's gonna kind of taper off. So it might not 100% eliminate the appearance of press marks, but it will do a very, very good job of minimizing the appearance. Now, the one thing that you don't really see me doing in these webinars is use a T-square, and that's because I've heat pressed bajillions of things. And I'm kind of cocky about it, so I don't, I don't use that. Uh, I'm using today. I'm using Parapy Inkjet Dark Pro, uh, which is it's it's a favorite of mine. Like I really, really, I'm a fan of Parapy Inkjet Dark Pro. However, you guys know me. You know that I absolutely love my Nina Jet Pro Soft Stretch. That right there. Just gonna grab some parchment paper. The Nina Jet Pro Soft Stretch, that's really like, I cannot say enough good things about that paper, but I didn't have any 11 by 17. So no biggie, like uh, Parapy, where are my scissors? There we go. Parapy Dark Pro, I mean, sorry, Parapy Inkjet Light Pro is extremely good, no shade. If the world ran out of Nina Jet Pro Soft Stretch, I, of course, no issues here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna kind of catch the center of it. I'm gonna to try to center this garment. When you're working with really big garments, sometimes what I'll do is I'll try to see how far the armpit lands on either side off the platen. But uh, if you have a lot of fabric hanging off the side, like that's a little bit harder to do. But thankfully for this little trick is you can just, usually this little Kanga pouch is lined up and, and this right here is, right about there is the center. And so, Again, I've done this a trillion times, so I'm pretty confident um, that I can get this. But of course, if you're new to this, by all means, please invest in a T-squared, and I'm gonna lower it just a little bit. Invest in a T-squared. I'm using the finger method right here, which is like, if my garment is centered on the lower platen, then what I can do is, you know, counting fingers here, I'm all about little, like four in a space over here, same distance over here. I'm confident that this is gonna work. So I'm gonna cover it with parchment paper. 
I'm gonna increase the pressure a little bit. And then, ah, broke myself there. And then you wanna make sure that this is not gonna like get caught up anywhere, the hood of your hoodie. Uh, some people, they'll load them upside down. Whatever you can do to accommodate it, I'm just gonna like fold this over and just help it so it doesn't get caught on the track or in our, there we go. Might as well just pull it out. No biggie. Careful not to actually shift this. So I gotta make sure it looks like I, I, I accidentally did this. This is, something you're gonna, this is why I like using a bigger heat press, by the way. And I meant to use this press, obviously. I have access to like a zillion heat presses here. Um, but just so you guys can see, like when you're working with bigger, bigger garments, sometimes it just helps to have a bigger plate so not so much fabric is hanging off the edge. You see how I'm kind of having to manipulate it a little bit. I kind of have to, you know, put the arm up here so that way it doesn't shift when I'm loading it. You know, different stuff. And if you're concerned about this moving, you could just get some heat tape. And I don't think I have any here. I don't, no worries. What you could do is if you really wanted to, you could just get some heat tape, tape it in place so that way it doesn't go anywhere. Of course, keep it in place. We're gonna very carefully slide it back in it looks like it's gonna make it there's a lot of fabric bunching up at the back here again when you're working with larger uh you know garments like this double x hoodie you know these are just things you want to be prepared for if this was a medium hoodie i probably would not be having this issue at all so i'm gonna go ahead and press it pressure feels a little tight so why did i tighten it so much there we go. One thing I didn't do was adjust to 30 seconds, no biggie. We're just gonna do a little trick I call the reset. <laughs> you guys see that there? There we go. Always set your time. I'm at the right temperature, 350 for this garment. And one more. It's 30 seconds time, and if you count the in between, I think we're good. And then once we get to, there we go. Light heat transfer paper is usually a hot or cold peel. I like to peel it hot. So what I'm gonna do is I like to give it a nice little tug, little tuggy. And then you want to catch the peel in one smooth motion. Now, some of my buddies here, uh, shout out to Eric and Jesus, my pals, they were telling me, and if a little ink is coming up, see, I probably will cook this a little bit longer. It's okay if a little ink comes up. What they, what they suggested and what I have been really enjoying lately is to do a cold peel. And in fact, I want to say that this is a cold peel. I'm going to re-hit it for a few seconds. What they suggested with the light transfer paper is to cold peel it. And then after you cold peel it, then hit it again. So if you find that your peel is kind of tough, like what you just saw right now, let it cool down completely. Now I know with light transfer paper, you've seen the videos, I've even recommended in the past peeling it hot. But, uh, but doggone, I actually really like it. And then once again, with your light transfer paper, you always wanna give it a little tug. Now you can see that the graphic here is, it's because we're using light transfer paper, but we're using a gray, you're not gonna see as much detail as you would as if it was on a white shirt. It's not that it's bad. I did this again intentionally because you know for light transfer paper and with, even with sublimation, we're always getting the questions like, hey, can I do this on colored garments? Well, when you do it on a colored garment, you're not having the white behind it to give it that really, to, so all the colors can be bold and vibrant. It, uh, you know, you could still see the heather gray uh, even through the dark part of this garment. So I'm gonna pull this off. We're gonna go back to the desk. And I'm gonna grab my beanie because we're gonna do the beanie next. What brand and style is the hoodie? That's a great question. This is, I know it's Gildan. It is a Gildan heavy blend. So this is a 50-50 cotton poly. 
I don't think it has the model number, but it's a Gildan Heavy Blend 50-50 Cotton Poly, and I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see. So you can see here, it's a picture of Ale, and you can still see the gray through it. You can still see, oh man, I'm, I'm terrible looking at the camera here. I think you can see it, right? Yeah. You can still see the sweater through it. So again, with light heat transfer paper, there's a trade-off. Now when this washes, it's going to be so soft. It's going to be way softer than dark transfer paper. Now dark transfer paper would have given me the full and vibrant, beautiful image. In fact, if you want to see how this, the original image, and you should be able to see it now. This is the image. This is the original. It's very clean. And you can see it's a pretty, really darn good resolution too. Now, here's the thing. If I wanted to see it as like this, I would have printed this on dark transfer paper and then heat pressed it. Now, the difference between dark and light, again, dark transfer paper has a, has a way thicker feel to it. And that's not something that I wanted for this particular sweater. I wanted this sweater to be so that way when I wash it and keep wearing it and keep washing it and keep wearing it, it's just gonna get softer and it's gonna have a vintage look. It kind of already does. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about something that has caused lots of stress for a lot of people and that's beanies. The reason why is because beanies and you know what let me grab a it's hard to see the black on camera let me grab a gray one real quick here we go this is an acrylic beanie which obviously i always say oh don't press acrylic but we found out a cool way to do it beanies are really stretchy and if you have a big head like me your beanie is going to get stretched out more than the average beanie all right so the problem with beanies is that when you apply heat transfer vinyl directly to the beanie is that it just wrinkles. And because the weave, I don't know, let's see if it'll, oh yeah. So you see how there's a really thick weave on this? It's kind of ribbed. The heat transfer vinyl presses into those ribs and when it stretches and contracts and stretches, it looks dumb, 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 dumb. And so a lot of people, they're just, they're not into it. They're just like, no, I, I don't want to do transfer vinyl, you know, so they'll, so you see a lot of embroidery. That's why things get embroidered onto beanies. Obviously, there's a good reason they get embroidered onto beanies because the embroidery is really going to hold its shape. And so what, there's a simple trick that you can use to put your heat transfer vinyl on a beanie, and that is called Strip Flock Pro. Caesar Strip Flock Pro comes in a bunch of different colors. Um, and it has all your basics like white, black, blue. Uh, I'm using orange today because I'm making a spooky themed beanie for myself. Yep, you're seeing me make a bunch of stuff for myself. And then I'm putting an old English B because I'm Latino and we love putting our initials in old English. I don't know what that's all about. All right, anyways, so I'm gonna be, so normally if I just wanted to put that initial there, that B onto the stretchy heat transfer vinyl, well, I wouldn't do, black on black, but you know, have the under layer. Um, but anyways, I wouldn't put the, if I put that initial on the heat transfer vinyl after a couple wears of being stretched and contracted, the stretch and contracted, it would just look all wrinkly and you like, it would just look ridiculously dumb. All right. So to solve that, to allow you guys, if you have been wanting to use your heat transfer vinyl on your acrylic stretchy beanies, just put it over a layer of Strip Flock Pro. It's that easy. So now Caesar Strip Flock Pro, I believe is a cold peel. So, I, and you know what, I will double check that. Now there are also a few considerations you do wanna make for this beanie. You wanna make sure you're pressing the right side, right? Make sure it's flat, nice and flat. Okay, and here's one thing that's important. You wanna measure the cuff. Now I've already done this and I've already measured the cuff. It kind of like, and of course people can adjust the cuff to however they want, but I think, I don't know if it's like a me, like a material memory thing, but like, like every time I've cuffed it, it cuffs like almost on its own. Here's a step you don't want to neglect. Now you, you should do this before you actually send everything to cut. You want to measure the cuff. All right. So get a good, nice cuff. All right. You want to measure the cuff. I'm, I'm measuring at right about, and you don't want to go like total edge to edge because you can't really press on the edge, right? So I'm measuring, I'm at right about like just a little over two and a half. 
So what I did was I actually made it real. Now the safe space is you don't want to be right on the edge of this top or bottom. The safe space is actually just about two inches. So I made sure that mine was an inch and three quarters. Another thing I do like about this is the beanie seam just like lets me know kind of where the middle is. Then I'm going to eyeball this. All right, now here's one more thing that I'm going to do is you don't want to press it like this because, again, this is acrylic. You're going to get some nasty press marks. So what I'll do is holding this in place, right? Going to reach in. Flatten out the beanie. And I'm going to press it like so. So even though the whole beanie is getting heat pressed, oh, and let me drop my temp a little bit. The 311 degrees. Uh, oh, so I should say because I'm pressing the whole beanie, you're not going to see a harsh press, press mark on the fold or anything. I'm going to press the whole beanie. That's another way to minimize the appearance of the press. And also I'm pressing on the inside of the beanie and not the outside. So even if these do get flattened a little bit, it's not really the end of the world. And by the way, I really hope you guys, if you've been looking for products to add to your line, you definitely want to be getting into beanies, jackets, and hoodies. It's it's the same process. It's not like you have to buy any extra equipment. I'm still using heat transfer vinyl. If you have you know an inkjet printer, I'm still using inkjet heat transfer paper. And I'm about to show you guys this nylon jacket in a second. But it's really cool to be able to offer new things to your customers. You know, make yourself a beanie. Like I, I guarantee you, this beanie is gonna get me at least five orders. Just wearing it, putting it on my social media, my friends. Oh, dude, you do beanies? Yeah, I do beanies. Let me do you some beanies, bro. I'm actually going to have a barber's appointment next week um, and I'm gonna wear this beanie and I'm actually gonna take my Barbara sample with his logo on it. Um, and I'm guarantee I'm gonna get a handful of orders from him like that. You just gotta kind of be smart about it. Every opportunity or everything you do really, if you have a, if you have a regular hairdresser, you know, ask, you know, wear a cool t-shirt, you know, and then they'll ask, hey, where'd you get that shirt? Dude, I make shirts. Boom, now your hairdresser wants shirts for her shop. She wants you to put something on like those nylon smocks. Dude, we're about to press nylon right now. But anyways, uh, here we go. We're going to be pressing the Strip Lock Pro first. Medium pressure. Actually, that's a little hard. Oh, that's another thing. This beanie is actually really thick. So even though we just had a thick sweater, this beanie is actually even thicker. There we go. You don't need like heavy, heavy pressure, especially for, again, it's acrylic synthetic fabric so you really don't want heavy pressure uh to like flatten anything out scorch it burn it there we go and the instructions say warm it says wait about 10 seconds or so after pressing so i'm gonna do just that we're gonna not totally hot but we're gonna let it cool down a little bit with the old caesar strip flock um this is strip flock pro with the old version of caesar strip flock you had to let it cool like a thousand percent and I can kind of see on this on this beanie here that I did kind of flatten some of this. It does look a little scorched to me. It's not terrible. Um, and it should be okay. Okay, so we should be warm now. Let's see. Let's give it a little test tug. Ooh, maybe I should wait a little bit. I'm gonna wait a little bit. It's still a little hot. So what you don't want to do is peel it while it's hot because then the the glue, the adhesive that's binding it to this beanie is gonna come loose and then it's it's not gonna be good. I have this beanie, I've already done this process before. I have this beanie, the strip flock, it grips it so, so tight. And you know what? This might not be strip flock pro, this might be, oh yeah, there it is, no, there it is. Yeah, it was just a little hot. There we go. Now, I'm not gonna give it the tug test just yet. I want it to completely cool before I give it the tug test, but it's ready to go. Okay, so now here's where I always get confused. This is inside out, right? So just so I know, okay, there we go, like I thought. So we're gonna flip it. And then I'm gonna place this because I don't wanna orient it up. So I, I've made that mistake before. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put it back inside out. And now I'm going to center this really quick, but make sure that it's oriented properly. So when I flip it, when people flip out the cuff on this beanie, it's going to look cool. 
and I'm not going to look like a dummy. Again, we got the old English B for my last name, Barbosa. Not sure why Hispanics like old English initials, but hey, I, I is who I is. All right. So now this that's Caesar Easy Read. So I'm only going to press that for like six seconds. And again, not too, too much pressure because, you know, you don't want to overpress anything. There we go. Beautiful. So I'm going to let this chill for a second. It's pretty hot. We're going to let it cool down before we give it the tug test. Um, just going to like let it air out a little bit. It's a little warm, so it might be a little uh, loose, but don't worry. Once it once the material cools down, that's just kind of the nature of acrylic. Once the material cools down, uh, it should get its elasticity back. So basically what we did was, and you guys probably heard me talking about this already, but what we did was because this is so stretchy, because it's so stretchy, you can't use regular heat transfer vinyl on it. And this is almost cool enough to give it the tug test. So you could use something really thick. Caesar Strip Flock Pro. Dude, you guys could just like, I don't know if you can really tell how thick it is, but like, like this is a hefty vinyl. Like it doesn't wave around. Like this is regular vinyl, right? It's all wavy and bendy, whatever. This is like some thick stuff. And I, I don't, it's probably not going to catch on camera. But this is like, I don't know. I'd say like four times as thick as regular vinyl. And it's just a very sturdy, resilient material. So what's good about that is when we put it on garments like this cap, it's not going to stretch. And I hope I don't. It should be cool enough for me to give it the tug test. Yeah. So you see here, I'm giving it the tug test and the vinyl's not stretching. Like this, the orange part, it's not going anywhere, right? It's keeping its shape because it's very thick and it's held on very tightly by the heavy duty adhesive. And so because the orange base layer is not gonna stretch, then whatever I put on top of it is also not gonna stretch. So this beanie is gonna serve very well you know, and it's gonna look super cool. And then you could do this with whatever your graphic. So if there's a graphic that you wanna put on a beanie and you wanna do it in heat transfer vinyl, you can actually do it in Strip Flock Pro as is, or I recommend putting Strip Flock Pro as a base. Using it as a base layer, and then you could put the heat transfer vinyl on top of it. And then the vinyl on top is not gonna stretch. It's not gonna get wrinkly and ugly. If you have a spare one of these beanies, I dare you to just put regular heat transfer vinyl straight up on it and then you'll see, you'll see what I mean. And really quick, you gotta give it the stretch test. I've seen a couple pictures of like vinyl on a beanie and it looks good after the first press, but then once it gets stretched and put on and stuff, then that's when it starts to wrinkle and get kind of crusty. So the last thing that we're gonna do, and one thing again, this is something that you can already offer to your customers. And here's the cool part. And I guess some a little, little piece of advice for you guys. This blank, this jacket, it's a double X, so it's a little more expensive than regular, right? This is a Delta, or sorry, no, Augusta Sportswear Adult 2XL, right? Coach's jacket, nylon, uh, pretty cool. These are starting to become more, more popular again. It's like everything goes in and out. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to open it up. Ooh. And uh, I don't need anything on the base layer. Um, but I will, and let's see if it fits. It doesn't. Normally what I would say is, is put a, a pressing pillow underneath this, uh, but my transfer is just a little too big for it. So we're gonna see some press marks. Let me give you an example. So this is a nylon jacket. One thing you wanna be careful with, even though the jacket's nylon, the inside lining might be like polyester or PVC. So if you heat press for too long, especially if you're layering something, you want to be careful that the inside layer does not melt. It shouldn't, because I've used this jacket before, this style of jacket, I should say. Um, it shouldn't have any problems, but just, you know, you want to be careful. Now, here's the deal about nylon. And you guys have probably heard me talk about this before. I'm just going to position this jacket on my heat press really quick. You make sure it's centered. With these, the shoulders usually like will indicate me as long as they're both evenly 
off. That's cool. There we go. It's the center. All right. Here's the thing about vinyl materials, right? So this is vinyl. And if you try to use regular heat transfer vinyl, like regular easy wheat, it's not going to work. You absolutely must. Non-negotiable. Don't even waste your time trying it. Easy weed extra. Easy weed extra. Get yourself a cool graphic. So whether you have your own clothing line, like this one I'm just making for fun, um, just so I can have another thing to add to my closet and make my wife mad, my crowded closet. Um, but yeah, Caesar Easy Weed Extra, it's designed with a special adhesive on here on this side that's going to stick with the vinyl. Right, this is a vinyl jacket. So if you guys are doing, now one more thing, jackets like this, the cheap ones, they're not, well, I'm not gonna call them cheap, but other versions are made of polyester. Make sure you check the tag. A polyester jacket, by all means, use regular easy weed, no big deal. If it's nylon, you absolutely must use Caesar easy weed extra or it's gonna peel after they wash it. Um, and, Pro tip, when you get your vinyl, your Easy Weed Extra, make sure you like label it extra, like put it in a special baggie or something because you don't want to mix it, mix up the two. Okay. So here's one thing I'm going to do. I do want this to be a little smooth before I press it. I don't want to press in any of these wrinkles, so I'm just going to drop it in there. Oh, and then I was pressing a beanie. That was a lot thicker. You don't need a ton of pressure on here. Gonna give it a little pre-press for a few seconds. There we go. Oh, and then it got caught up there. Again, I'm using a 1515 for a gigantic double X. And this jacket's already like a classic fit, like oversized anyways. Should be good. And again, you never wanna hear those words from your barber or your doctor. Eh, should be good. But I'm neither to you, so. Should be good. Just gonna cover this. Actually, no, I mean, there we go. Full coverage. All right, let's go. Okay, we got 311 degrees, 12 seconds on the clock. If I'm not mistaken, Caesar Easy Weed Extra goes on at 305, but no big deal. My pressure did feel a little light. So I'm just gonna double check something really quick. If you ever have any questions about a new product, oh, there we go. Oh yeah, I can kind of see it. Oh, actually that's stuck pretty good. Oh no. Yeah, pressure was a little light. So all I'm gonna do is, and that you see some heavy wrinkling, nylon again, it's a it's a it's a sensitive material. It's gonna increase the pressure a little bit, restamp that. Um, because I don't want this to peel. There we go. That should be good. And I'm gonna peel carefully, just again, 100%. If you're ever not totally sure, just peel slowly because as long as it doesn't lift, yeah, there we go. As long as nothing like completely lifts off, you can always like restamp it, no biggie. And I just, I just wanna be confident in this. So I'm gonna give it one more, careful not to overpress. There we go, that feels a little more firm like the way it's supposed to. And I'm not gonna give it the full 10 seconds, just enough to really stamp in my vinyl. There we go, ah, oh, that's hot. There we go, now one thing you're probably gonna notice on this jacket, and I have no problem showing you, is that there is a, not a crazy press mark, but there's a slight marking. What I usually do for my nylon, if I can't press with a pressing pillow, what I will do is I'll just go over it with an iron at a low medium temperature later on, cover it with parchment paper, of course, and just kind of iron out the edges. Obviously, if I had a pressing pillow the right size or if I had sized my graphic to fit this appropriately, we wouldn't have that issue. It turns off. And honestly, I'm usually using a 16 inch wide heat press, which allows me to use the larger size pressing pillow. So again, using a small heat press today because you totally can. You know, when people are picking a size of heat press, which heat press do I get? Do I get a 1620? Can I use it a 15 by 15? And my response is usually, how many big shirts are you going to be making? Because as you can see, I, I did it. No problem. I've made, we did our beanie. 
we did my big double X jacket, which this jacket is probably the size of a triple X t-shirt, you know, if we're talking size. You know, so we just did this. Very cool, by the way. City of Angels. My royal blue jacket. Totally dope. And so anyways, I did it, but you could see there's so much fabric hanging off. Things were so loose. A little cumbersome. Not impossible by any means, but just if I had a bigger heat press, it would just hold more of the garment on there. Then I could use my larger pressing pillow and things wouldn't have been such an issue. Um, so, you know, that's usually why I say, hey, if you can, or if you think you're going to be doing bigger garments, Go for the 1620. Heck, if you are like, if if the, if my t-shirts are the minimum size that you're doing, if you're going all the way up to like 3X, 4X, 5X, you probably even want a 16 by 24. Of course, that's up to you. It's up to your business needs. Um, I've done 3X shirts on that 15 by 15. And it's just like, oh shoot, like, you know, it's not impossible. It just takes a little more work just because there's so much fabric hanging off all the sides. You know, that's just the way it is. No shade, that's, I love that heat press, the Craft Pro 15 by 15. I think I recommend it just as much as any other press or more. I think the only other one, okay, I personally own the 1620 Sig Series uh, Auto Open. That's the one I recommend most. But second behind it is the Craft Pro 1515. I thank you guys so much for joining me for today's My Expert Live training webinar. I honestly hope you guys make tons of money selling custom jackets, cool hoodies, and you know i'm gonna put this beanie on so you can see how cool i look with my initial my own initial in old english there we go so now i have my custom beanie and my big head stretching out this beanie doesn't matter because i have it on my cool base layer of strip flock pro so when i go to the snow hopefully i can go to the snow uh, later this winter i'll be nice and warm cold ain't gonna get me this year all right you guys yeah, that's going to do it for me. Once again, I hope you guys have a very safe and happy weekend. Oh, man, I'm so excited for this weekend. Just going to relax and do nothing. Oh, every adult's dream, right? All right, I'm going to stop talking now.